One in three people really will develop cancer. So most of us won't have to face it ourselves, but it will probably affect one of our family. Um, and, and having said that, uh, probably about one in four people will die from, from cancer. So uh, these days, with the ageing population, um, it is more likely that as we don't die from other things, we may develop um, a form of cancer. Um, and there are various screening programmes that are active in the UK and about to become active, looking at picking up uh, cancers earlier. So many of our treatments, in fact, are not just looking at treating cancers when they're quite late in a palliative, non-curative way, but treating them earlier in a curative way. My name is Andrew Dogart and I'm a radiotherapy physicist here at the Berkshire Cancer Centre. Radiotherapy may be defined as the management of malignant disease by the use of ionising radiation. And in this tutorial, you're going to see how different members of the team, including oncologists, physicists and radiographers, work together so that a patient may be treated using radiotherapy in a safe and effective manner. So basically, that's vision, so that controls all of the planning. You've already seen clinical oncologist Paul Rogers. Here is Jill Wyatt, one of the therapy radiographers. She plans treatment and treats cancer patients using high energy x-rays. You have problems with the machine, you'd probably want to get into control group eight each time you start. Paul Whithard is head of the radiotherapy physics section, which provides the physics and technical support to the radiotherapy service. This has been used for many, many years. Kim Hare is the mould room technician responsible for making the equipment necessary for immobilising patients during radiotherapy treatment. You can hear more from these members of staff by clicking the link buttons. Now let's go back to Paul Rogers for more background information on cancer treatment. When someone comes with a diagnosis of cancer, the first thing to do really is to stage the cancer, to find out how best to treat it. And by stage, I mean to, to find out whether the cancer is uh, confined to one particular spot or whether it has spread in the different ways that it can do. Uh, and cancer can spread in one of two ways, either via the lymphatics to various lymph nodes, usually adjacent to the primary tumour, or via the blood, um, when the cancer may have metastasized to other parts of the body, the lung, the liver, the bones or the brain. Uh, and these days we perform, generally speaking, a CT scan to assess that, maybe a bone scan as well. Uh, and once one has ascertained whether the cancer is confined, then you know how best to treat the cancer. And there are three different modalities for treating cancer, really. One is surgery, one is chemotherapy, and the other is radiotherapy. Surgery and radiotherapy are the two local measures. They treat just where you're cutting or shining the x-rays. Um, and those have the best chance of cure of, of cancers. Um, chemotherapy is a, a systemic treatment that goes around the whole body and therefore can either treat things once they have spread or um, help to prevent things from coming back elsewhere. So chemotherapy is generally not a curative thing up front, although it is for some tumours, um, and therefore the first and best treatment is usually surgery um, and then radiotherapy is the second best um, option as a general rule for curing cancers. Having said that, there are some cancers where one would want to use radiotherapy in preference of surgery. For example, if someone has a uh, tumour of the larynx, the voice box, uh, to remove one's voice box has a big impact on life, obviously, and communicating with the world. Therefore, uh, if one can treat that with radiotherapy and preserve the organ, preserve the voice box, clearly that's preferable. Uh, and in early laryngeal cancer, the cure rates from radiotherapy are 95%, so they're very, very good, as good as surgery. And other areas that are, if you like, equally effective as surgery and therefore beneficial and organ sparing would be prostate cancer, bladder cancer, uh, to name some of the pelvic tumours, 
and, and there's also a role in breast cancer where you can remove perhaps a smaller amount of breast tissue. Gone are the days now where we have to remove the whole breast with a small breast cancer. Uh, you can remove the lump to, and then give some post-operative radiotherapy to the breast to help prevent a recurrence in the breast. So the two do go together as well. Sometimes um, it is quite clear when, uh, what treatment to advise patients to have. For example, one would advise radiotherapy to the, to the voice box, the, the larynx, if one had an early laryngeal cancer. However, when you have a prostate cancer, for example, which is one of the tumours I particularly treat, uh, the patients do have a choice, and sometimes it's very hard for them to know the right, uh, the right treatment option for them. Uh, some patients will know that in their own mind, if they've got a cancer, they will want it out of their body and they will not be happy until it's, it's gone. Uh, and those patients will generally choose surgery. Uh, for others, uh, the idea of having major surgery and being off work for six weeks um, uh, might be just too much or too intrusive, particularly if it's a very, very early prostate cancer that was found almost by chance. Uh, that's causing them no symptoms uh, and for them the idea of uh, radiotherapy in, in one of the different forms of radiotherapy that we can give uh, is a far more preferable option uh, so that they don't have to take time off work uh, or, or interrupt their uh, their lifestyles mm -hmm.